Do you know what these are? Do these look like the moderately expensive and kind of hard to find Xenoblade and Splatoon 2 themed pro controllers for the Nintendo Switch? Or do they look just a little strange? Can you tell which one is actually the $20 knockoff? They bo both are actually. These are both fake. But my curiosity peaked when I saw these controllers online. Not only did they have motion controls, not only did they have HD rumble, but they also featured an NFC chip reader, meaning I can use my amiibos on these things. And they're only 20 bucks. What was the catch? In fact, in front of me right here on this table, I have a bunch of fake Nintendo Switch controllers, even Joy-Cons. There has to be something wrong with these and all of the knockoff controllers that I have in front of me. And that is what we're gonna get to the bottom of today. And I'm gonna rank every single one of these knockoffs from best to worst and let you know if it's actually worth buying any of them. But before we get to any of that, I actually have a sponsor for this video. Forget everything you know about mobile games because one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019 has just released and it's going to change your perception on mobile gaming. It's called Raid Shadow Legends. Mike and James talked about this game and Mike loves it. He still plays it. And then I saw even JonTron is playing Raids. I was like, okay, I have to check this out and see what it's all about. And the best part is, unlike these $20 controllers, which are still cheap, Raid is completely free. Trust me, I've never spent money on a mobile game and I don't intend to start now. It has a pretty great storyline, the graphics surprised me, there's giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. Oh, and uh, no one's joined my clan yet, so it would be great if you searched up the beat-em-ups clan and joined me, I'll be accepting people over the next couple days. And you guys know how this works by now, if you click my special specific link, I only mine in the description, and download the game, you will get 50,000 silver immediately and a free epic champion. So thank Thank you, Raid, for sponsoring the video with your free fun game. Now, let's get back on to some cheap crap. And now, this isn't a Kevin Kenson video, although he has beat me to the punch with literally every one of these controllers. Even Spawnwave uploaded a video like two days ago of this one, which, by the way, only came today in the mail. I had it on order forever. And I've already synced them all up to my Switch, and oh boy, let me talk about that when I go through these controllers. It's not as uh, easy syncing these uh, cheap knockoff controllers as it should be. So I want to start with the box. And now, because these are Chinese and they're translated into English, it's kind of hard to figure out what they mean sometimes. And I feel like most of it, they're just lying. Not so much with these ones, they did lie. I was lied to, but with a lot of these, there's just a lot of lying going on, China. But I might want to cut it back on the fibs. To start with, we got compatible with all games, which has on its card case. I don't know what that means exactly, but I'm going to assume it basically means compatible with the Switch and all the games on the Switch. Includes motion controls, HD rumble, built-in amiibo functionality, and more. One of those is a lie. We're going to get to that. Built-in battery can last 20 hours. I haven't tried using these for 20 hours. I don't know how true that claim is, but I wouldn't hold them to their word at this point. <laughs> when your product is for a Nintendo system, but you can't sell it using the word Nintendo, you know something fishy is going on. <laughs> but they're very comfortable. Again, this is an actual pro controller. For those that watched the video where I drilled into my hand and got blood everywhere, I was changing the skin of both these Joy-Cons and this Pro Controller. So this is the original actual Pro Controller with some third-party knockoff skin, but that's beside the point. It still feels the same, it plays the same, it's exactly the same, and if you want to learn how to do this, by the way, I'll leave a link down below and at the end of the video so you can check that out. Also, I drill into my hand and that's always eventful. So, the actual Pro Controller and a fake Pro Controller, the weight is exactly the same. The buttons look exactly the same. The toggles are, do I need to say it again, exactly the same. Same. The triggers feel, I'm not saying it a fourth time, that you can't tell the difference just by holding one of these things. That's why I said if I had just seen this at a swap meet and picked it up for 20 bucks, I would have thought I got a steal. I mean, even right there, when I synced it up to the system, it recognizes it as the Splatoon controller. Everything about this is as legit as it can be. I'm not sure how they've managed to do this, but I do have one theory. So everything about these two controllers are great, other than this.
Like, I'm not sure if the <laughs> NFC Amiibo Reader is hidden somewhere weird on the controller. I've tried just about everything and I can't get him to scan in. If I switch over to my actual Pro Controller, it works immediately. I switch back to my cheapy cheapy fake fake. It says built-in amiibo functionality. It's just a lie. Like, it's just a flat-out lie. It says that on the box, which I paid extra to get the box, by the way. It says that on the box, it says that online, it says that everywhere, they are supposed to be able to read. You can actually kind of see through the case. It's almost like a clear case. And it almost looks like there is nothing in that spot. Every single part of these feel legit. Even the cases look legit. Everything about them is a pro controller. The only thing that it can't do is read amiibos. Other than that, if you're looking for a cheap pro controller and you want to risk maybe them showing up kind of broken or maybe not showing up at all, 20 bucks ain't bad. <laughs> Let's move on to something that is bad. That's very bad. These Joy-Cons. Now, to the untrained eye, yet again, these might actually just look like normal Joy-Cons. But take a closer look. They're massive. These are the extra large Joy-Cons, which I actually heard about thanks to Kevin Kenson. To the point where, and again, I talked about syncing these controllers and how much of an issue it was. With, the, with these Pro Controllers, the only way I could get them to sync was with the USB cord, hooking it straight up into the Switch. With these, I actually couldn't figure it out for the life of me, and they didn't come with any kind of instructions, at least mine didn't. So I had to actually watch Kevin's video to find out how to sync these things. On this one, I had to hold the wipe button and the home button down at the same time. And on this one, I had to hold the left on the D-pad and the capture button at the same time. And I had to try that about seven times before it finally worked. Like, I thought Kevin was trolling me. So if we can get these to turn on somehow right now, that would be great. I got one of them on. Okay, finally. Takes forever. <laughs> Now these are nowhere near as nice as the Pro Controllers. They are, they are no way compare in my opinion. Let me go through everything that's wrong with them. For starters, the HD Rumble. It feels loose, it feels weak, it, it feels really off. It feels like there's a goldfish inside each one of these that's just flapping around sporadically at random intervals. It's not a very strong or very good Rumble at all, and it's definitely not a HD Rumble. They are extremely light, which ain't necessarily a bad thing, but it makes them feel really cheap. The plastic feels really cheap and they just feel really cheap. But the D-pad here is awful, truly awful. It doesn't have a nice feel to it. It doesn't click well. It feels weirdly spongy, but they do work both like this in my hands and clipped into the switch. However, and this right one is kind of a pain in the butt. You really have to force it. And it was really hard to get off the switch. Like I am pushing this down with a lot of strength right now. There we go. These lights here, they never go off. They are constantly on. And the reason for that is they don't actually connect to the switch. They're still technically operating as if they're wireless, as if they're still in my hands. There's no way to actually sync them up to the switch like that. You even have to charge them separately by the USB ports, meaning you need two of these USB cords plugged in and charging these things separately is very annoying and they don't charge up when they're connected to the switch and in the dock. They are absolutely your responsibility to separately charge up when you're done playing and they don't last long. Again, according to Kevin, I watched his video, they last about four hours at best. So when it comes to battery life and charging the battery, they are, they are not fun to deal with at all. But for what it's worth on the bright side, I do kind of like the way they look on the Switch. It obviously makes the Switch seem a lot wider and they just sort of are comfortable. Do I recommend them? No, not at all. Yeah, really don't cheap out on Joy-Cons. Now this one is stuck permanently to my Switch. Oh man. Ugh. So at this point, I feel like I've left two elephants in the room. Let's start with the Xbox controller. Why has there been an Xbox One controller sat on this table the whole video? Well, because this Xbox One controller isn't actually an Xbox One controller. As you can probably guess by the theme of the video, it's a Switch controller. And this one also came in recently, and I haven't even taken off this blue plastic wrap yet. That was a really, that was a really, 
satisfying. I'm not gonna lie. Now, out of every controller on this table right now, and I, I'm even the, the other elephant in the room, which I'll get to, I have to say this one feels the cheapest. This feels like a $7 controller to hold in my hand. But it also feels pretty much exactly like an Xbox One controller. Just a lot less quality. <laughs> it is pretty much the same mold. It just feels like it was made with the cheapest ingredients you could possibly find. Let's go ahead and turn on this Xbox One controller by holding down this middle button. We have a really cheap looking middle button with some really cheap lights flashing around it. The B button, and this really doesn't matter, but the letter B is completely misaligned with the middle of the button and it's really throwing off my OCD. So we're gonna just not look at that anymore. <laughs> It just plays even more into how cheap this thing looks and feels. Oh, I was supposed to be ranking these, by the way, and I forgot. So the Pro Controllers, yeah, they're really nice. These Joy-Cons, no, they're really bad. So let's keep it going. <laughs> this controller, just like the Pro Controller, apart from the fact it feels a little cheap, it really works. And one thing I do like, and I, I really should have tested this on a racing game, although I imagine the control inputs are just gonna register as, I'll tell you what I mean. These, <laughs> all over the place, these triggers are the only triggers I have found so far on any Switch Joy-Con, knockoff controller, anything that actually are pressurized. And they do feel nice, honestly. They have some nice give to them. And again, even the motion controls aren't working anymore. I may have spoke too soon. Wait, hold on. Did I turn motion controls off or something? There we go. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'd broken the controller. In this one, it's not as good as the Pro Controllers, but it's still pretty good and very usable. If I was handed this controller by my big brother to play really any two-player game on the console, which is where these knockoff controllers are most likely going to be used, let's not beat around the bush, I probably wouldn't ever feel like I was at a huge disadvantage. I would still really only have myself to blame. I would still blame the controller, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> the merit to it is questionable. I'm gonna put that squarely in the middle. Now, we have one more. <laughs> and oh boy, it's a good one. <laughs> this is an Ouya controller that has been reprogrammed and recolored, reskinned and repurposed as a Nintendo Switch controller. I really don't know why. Because this is by far, the Uyu controller was by far the worst controller of all time. And there are some shocking controllers out there. And this is absolutely the worst controller I have ever used. Ever. It feels horrible. It's just, there's no good way to hold it, actually. I'm trying to figure out how my brain wants to hold it, and there's no good way. My hands don't fit in this thing. Kind of want to wrap around and grip on, almost like I'm holding a firearm. And this ridge here is almost sharp in the hands. Like, it almost, it rubs against the bone. That's it. That is the best way I can explain it. Every point of this controller, other than right here, rubs against the bones of your hand. Like, this controller is making me angry, just trying to explain how awful it is. It is, it... freaking triggers, man. The way that they kind of just sit flush on the top of this controller, and then press into the control, like, they kind of sink down, like, a into a pit of emptiness. It's so ugly. Like, everything about it. What a waste of space. Everything about this is just a waste of plastic. But you know the worst part of this controller? Listen to the sound this controller makes when you click in the thumbsticks. That is the, the loudest, like, I can't even hear myself talking over this. Could you imagine trying to subtly and quietly play your Switch in bed next to your wife or partner or just in the same house at like 2 a.m. in the morning? So you better hope that whatever game you're playing doesn't need you to be clicking in the thumbsticks. Or I guess you better hope that no one buys you this thing. Not that I, ha I have any idea why anyone would buy this thing other than for the lols. Which is exactly what I've done. So I shouldn't even be this angry because it's not like I ever have to use this thing again. And I can go out and burn it later on. You know what? This is going all the way down here. It is... The most uncomfortable, and I'm, and I, you know who I'm mad at? Ouya. It's like they never, they didn't even get anyone who had ever played a video game in their lives or held a controller in their lives to help out on the project. I think they just took one look at it and they thought the design was cool and they went with that. 
I don't, I don't know why I got so angry about that. You know, they don't actually say Nintendo. What, do they? Nintendo. Oh, they do. They're not able to actually say the word Nintendo anything, which means they didn't print the word Nintendo on here, which means these are like, I legitimately, at the very least, bought the skins. I mean, that's a good buy. That really isn't bad. Th just stay away from this. It's the point, the point to my entire video is buy this maybe, don't ever buy this ever. Not even a maybe, never. I, I don't, I, I don't care. I, I, like, subscribe, hair flip. I'm Kevin Kenson, and you've been watching the the Kevinator. <laughs> How does he end his videos, Kevin? You need to end your video. Okay, I. Need <laughs> your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Kevin Kenson is not available. Hey, Big Kev. Um. I'm not sure how you end your videos. We would all like you to be informed that from now on, uh, you have to end your videos by saying, you've been watching The Kevinator. Thanks, thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, so now you know. <laughs> oh man. He's gonna get that message and be like, what? <laughs> how are you? Sorry, I was driving. Good, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. What were you doing? Driving. Oh, yeah, don't talk and drive. I don't know how you sign out your videos, but I decided from now on you have to sign them out by saying, um, I'm the Kevinator and I'll see you next time. But I feel like we have to have, like, Terminator music play or something. I mean, that's up to you. You, you, can, you can play around with it as long as you end every video with it from now on. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> it doesn't sound like... It doesn't, it. it doesn't sound like a yes. I'm a very indecisive person. <laughs> You're only... You're only gonna disappoint me and half a half a million people. It's fine. That's cool. I'm used to it. <laughs> okay, so I told Kevin that I was pretty sure that this was a mostly real, legit pro controller, and he told me that he really wanted me to open it up and find out. And I really don't know what I'm looking at, so I'm gonna call Spawn Wave and send him a photo of the board and see if he can tell me if this thing is real or not. Please leave your message for four four three. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm just creating the most ambitious crossover in a Nintendo Switch controller video. The most ambitious crossover? Yeah, I already called Kevin Kenson. <laughs> now I'm calling you. Did I tell you about those controllers I found on AliExpress? Those, uh, yeah. pro, the pro controllers? So I, I got them and I've been messing around with them and I, I was convinced that they were actual pro controllers just with the NFC chip taken out. Can you tell just by looking at that? Yeah, it's not, well, it's not using the, um... It's not using HD rumble, it has like the basic rumble motors. Yeah, actually I noticed that too just a moment ago. Do you have another you have a pro controller, don't you? Do you have another one? Yeah, I just couldn't be bothered opening that one again. Uh, I mean, it has, it has the Nintendo Switch logo right on the front too, at the top. Like, like between the plus and minus buttons where it normally is. No, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. Okay, well that answered that. Thanks. It turns out that pro controllers have a little easter egg. When you look behind the right thumbstick, it says thanks to all the game fans. Well, this Chinese knockoff board tried to recreate that easter egg, but they misspelled it. To mix to all game fans, L. They, they just put an L on the end. <laughs> well, they fooled me. I have to, I still am, I still stand by it. It's a very, very good fake. It's clearly using all the right parts. Something I didn't think about was, is there is supposed to be a Nintendo Switch logo right here, and there's not. So, um, yeah, whatever. If you want to see me uh, open up a different Pro Controller and change the skin as well as do this stuff, click or tap right here. Subscribe. Hair flip all over it. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and uh, remember to tweet at Kevin Kenson every single day until he finally ends at least one video with, you've been watching The Kevinator, and I'll see you next time.